This is my blow-off valve. My car was running a little bit weird. It sounded like this was stuck because it was no longer dumping to atmosphere. It would just go, and, and um, I would have a lot of fluttering, just that partial throttle. It never did that before, and it just started doing it. So I figured there might be something wrong with it. It might be stuck shut. So I took it out in the hopes of thinking I can figure out what happened. But once I took it out, you can see it activates very easily. So I don't think this is stuck. The top part where you can twist to adjust how soft or hard the spring or tension is, uh, that part seems to be stuck and it's not moving. I'm gonna try to open it. <coughs> oh, there we go. It's just really tight. Apparently I'm supposed to use the pink spring. So I have the pink spring here. Since I have it all apart, I might as well swap this. So let's try not to blow this out in my face. Well, what do you know? This is already the pink spring. What do you want from me? Is this the same thing? I mean, cylinder looks okay. This is what it looks like inside. Um, all right. So I don't think anything's wrong with this. All right, this is a pink spring, and this is a pink spring. Um, I don't know, this isn't very scientific. I don't, I think they're both the same. Uh, I'm just gonna use this one, just because. Put this guy in here, and then just close this. It's as simple as that to change the spring out on a TurboSmart uh, Compact. This is the Compact 20 mil dual port blow off valve. They make them in different sizes. I'm sure the process is probably exactly the same. I'm gonna put this back in the car and give it a try now. I'm gonna try to troubleshoot what's going on here. I'm gonna turn the car on and check to see if there's 12 volts to these pins here. Which would make sense because if 12 volts doesn't get here, it doesn't open the solenoid and then it doesn't vent the blow off valve and whatever else needs vacuum to operate. I don't know what else this stuff goes to here. I'm gonna use my old battery, hook it up to some clamps and some wire. I'm just gonna apply 12 volts to that sensor or solenoid, I mean, I'm gonna apply 12 volts to that solenoid. But now the blow off valve will work. This is the ABV here. It's a vacuum solenoid. The ECU tells this to open when the throttle closes to open up the blow off valve so it can release the excess pressure so I don't get uh, flutter and surge. You saw that I tested this. It clearly is working if I apply 12 volts to this manually. It works fine if I bypass it. The idle valve keeps clicking so it's struggling to keep my idle going. So theoretically something's wrong with my throttle sensor or my ECU. It's probably easy for me to test this. I looked in the manual. I'm gonna try to like check if anything's wrong with this. I don't really know what I'm doing. As I was saying that like, I don't have extra parts. I don't have these things. 
Uh, I do have a few map sensors. I probably bought too many of those. I, I got two extra for some reason. But um, these things I don't have extras of. If something's wrong with them, I would have to try to order a new one or a used one somewhere. It'll probably take me a week or two. I don't really want to wait a week or two. I just want to drive my car. So I was thinking and I just realized. So this is what I kind of originally planned for. I wanted my truck to have the same parts as my car. That way if I wanted to stock some maintenance parts or whatnot, they would both share the same parts. And it just finally hit me. Look, that's the same throttle sensor. And that's the same ABV valve. And then there's the idle speed controller. And there's the map sensor. Look at that. And my plans kind of come together. The idea here was I treasure my car more than the carry. I mean, the carry is useful, it's a truck. I mean, I don't really care if it's broken or something. Well, not this kind of broken, but that's a whole different story. The idea was if I ever needed some parts that don't exist anymore and it meant my car could continue to operate, the idea was I would cannibalize the truck. Um, I don't think this is the situation for that right now, but but it's an option. Pawing through the manuals, uh, not this one, I need the thick guy. The next thing I'm going to check is the throttle position sensor. I'm going to disconnect the, the coupler here so I can get access to the prongs. Then I can check between A, B, and C to see if I meet these specs to make sure my throttle position sensor is okay. Uh, at idle, with the throttle closed, uh, between B and C, I'm supposed to see about 0 to 500 ohm. With the throttle stepped in a little bit, it's supposed to go read infinity here. And then right here, the next is going to be at wide open throttle. So from A to B, between these two connections at above 80% or more open, it's going to say 0 to 500. And when it's less than 80%, it's going to say infinity too, between A and B. Let's go check these out. It's really hard to see because the prongs are closer, a little bit closer to... Uh, this side and that kind of leaves for not much room to do anything because I have to do it from the inside. I don't feel like removing these hoses so I'm not making it easier for myself either. I push the plug out of my way at least. All right, just because of how difficult this is for me to test by myself, you're gonna have to trust that I tested this properly and I don't think this is my problem. I'm gonna go check my ECU situation now. Here's the ABV, the air bypass valve. The manual says between uh, these two prongs, the ohms should be somewhere between 37 and 44. I'm reading, I'm reading 38 consistently. Uh, so I am within spec here and that's not a problem for the electrical connector at least. There's also a blow test I'm gonna try on this. There are three nozzle points here. The one right here is A, the highest one is B, and the one on the bottom is C. I'm gonna blow into A and check that air is coming out of C at the bottom. I'm just gonna use a random napkin. Okay, the napkin's not gonna help, but you can hear the air. Okay, so that, that part works. Tricky part again, I'm gonna apply 12 volts to the solenoid here and then blow in the tube at the same time and feel for air coming out of the top one and not the bottom one. Okay, confirmed. I was able to feel air coming out of here and when I take it off, it doesn't come out of here. So it does work properly. Coming in the car here, I've already removed my ECU. I gotta find my ABV prong and I gotta find the B plus prong and figure out which ones I need to do to figure out how many ohms that there should be in here to verify that, like the wiring and whatnot is okay. Finally, I have a result. I found the ISC uh, port. It's the idle speed controller and I found the B plus on the other thing. So if I do this, I get a value of 24 and that is within the spec of the manual where it says 22 to 26. So this one is supposed to be ABV. Let's try this again. ABV should be 37 to 44. Put this here, put that here. And there we have it. Somewhere between 37 and 44. So that's correct. Nothing's wrong with this stuff. 
Now, now I'm kind of concerned because it seems like all this stuff is okay. Uh, does that mean the ECU is not good? So I've taken the ECU apart here. I'm looking at the board. I don't see anything wrong with any of the capacitors or any of the connections and everything. Everything looks very clean and intact. Over here, you can see like everything's labeled. So like ABV, ISC, all that stuff is right there. And it goes underneath. And looking at the board down here too, it looks pristine. I don't see any damage, corrosion, anything. I have a cappuccino ECU right here. This is a cappuccino N1 ECU. So my little harness I hooked up should plug right into this and it should work. That doesn't really rule out anything unless uh, it behaves completely different. And then over here, I have my original AZ1 Cara computer. I can just hook up into my stock harness. And if this works, then I don't know, maybe my, my janky uh, harness extension thing is messed up. Or maybe this is messed up, but let's find out. Let's start with the stock cappuccino ECU. Now to figure out why the N1 one doesn't work. Maybe it's a fluke. Maybe it's because I took everything out and kind of played with it and put it back and kind of made it work okay. Um, I'm gonna put this back in again and try one more time. Let's try again. Something's wrong with that. After contacting some electrical engineer friends and asking them for advice on how to fix this thing, if it's just some chip that's dead, if they can look at it, whatever, all that stuff, they told me, oh, it's easy to fix if you can figure out what it is. One of them told me I need a circuit diagram in order to fix it at all. Um, I don't have any of that stuff. So I checked on the internet. I posted in one of the Facebook groups for Kate cars and whatnot. And Soleil mentioned that this isn't even a cappuccino ECU just by looking at the board. And I made this harness adapter because I had a cappuccino N1 ECU and I have that K-Sport PNP to plug in. And I made this little harness that switches the pins however that I need to for it to work. It never even crossed my mind this was not a cappuccino ECU because I was told this is a cappuccino ECU. You know, can't believe everything you hear, right? Hey, it says gullible on the ceiling. Oh, so it all oh, you stole my lungs. I took the covers off my car ECU the Cappuccino ECU, and the Mystery Suzuki Sport one. This is the Kara ECU, the original one. All these things here, these pins, they all line up with these pins. With the Cappuccino swapping mod, where you need to move some pins to make it work, ABV, uh, DN, like a bunch of stuff gets moved. So ABV was no longer in the same port on this thing. Therefore, that explains why ABV does not work. Now that I determined that this isn't a cappuccino ECU and it's actually probably an Alto ECU, I'm gonna take this out. Let's give it a try. One more go. Here we go, moment of truth. Does the blow off valve work? All right, now that I've collectively wasted everybody's time going down that rabbit hole, believing that the ECU was a cappuccino ECU when it was in fact not a cappuccino ECU, 
We've at least learned a few things. We learned how to troubleshoot the throttle position sensor, how to troubleshoot the air bypass valve and how that actually works. And uh, I didn't troubleshoot the idle speed control because I don't really need to, but we looked at it. Um, yeah, at least we learned some stuff, I guess. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more K-Vehicle stuff. I'll see you next time.